What are the top five tools I get the most mileage out of when performing a pen test? It's a great question. Let's find out starting right now. So number one with a bullet is going to be the tried and true, everybody's favorite, Nmap, right? Because Nmap helps us understand what the state of affairs are in the environment, or can and do that very well. If you haven't looked at Nmap, let's take a look at my computer. I'll give you a little rundown of it. If you just type in Nmap, if it is installed, you'll get a lovely display of all sorts of wonderful options that you can employ and do have their place in a, uh, a reconnaissance area of performing a pen test. A lot of oldies and goodies in there, just performing typical connection type of scanning where is the port open? What kind of services can I find there? Maybe even run a little bit of vulnerability assessment using Nmap. It's got a lot of functionality in it, so I do find it really useful, but almost invariably when I start working in a CTF or if I was doing an engagement, I would most likely be breaking out Nmap right at the front of that that piece of, uh, of testing because then I'm going to find out what ports and services are open, maybe even some versioning. And like I said, even get a little mileage out of it when it comes to some vulnerability assessment as well. So it's a really great tool and one that I highly recommend you get really familiarized with because of how many options and available uh, things it can do just beyond scanning for ports and services. It's a really great tool. So check that one out. I definitely would have to bring this one in as my number one. Number two is going to be an interesting one. It's called GoBuster. It's a really great tool. It's really fast, does a wonderful job of directory fuzzing web applications. I find myself working on web apps quite a bit. So it is one of my go-to, no pun intended, tools for fuzzing out those directories that might have some really interesting pieces of information in there. Let's just take a look at it real quick and see what kind of options we have. If I just type in GoBuster, there you go. You get those wonderful uh, available options for yourself to, to hang out with. Some of the things I typically do is run this in the dir mode, right? As, a, as available commands, it's got a couple of modes. We've got some DNS subdomain brute forcing mode. Obviously some help is, is nice to have, uh, uses vhost brute forcing mode. So you can see it doesn't just do the one thing, it has a couple of options to it. This is just typically the one that I use with it the most, which is that, that directory or file brute forcing option. And from there I can feed it word lists and hopefully if I have the right words in those word lists, GoBuster will go after or make connections with a web application and see, hey, does that file or directory exist? If it does, I'm gonna report that back to my guy here and let him know, you might wanna take a look at that. Maybe you can find something really interesting and maybe even vulnerable to find your way into the internal workings of this web application. So great tool, GoBuster. Number three on my list is going to be, uh, well, it's gotta have it, you gotta love it. It is Burp Suite. I'm using the community version, but there's also the pro version. Cost you a little bit of money. It's not free by any stretch of the imagination, but it's also not super out of the realm of possibilities, expensive either. So if you can go for that pro version, it is worth the squeeze, but Burp Suite community version will also do quite a bit of testing for you. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here it is. I'm running a bit of an older version of it as of the recording of this episode. That's because I've got a bit of a workflow going here, but I am currently upgrading into the current version as we speak. But for my workflow, I like to stick with what I know at this point. But you can look at things like targets. These are the websites that I visited. What this is is a proxy. I connect my web browser to this, or I can connect anything that makes connections to the web or the internet and say, hey, any request that goes out there, just grab it first, take a look at it so that I can inspect it, work with it, maybe even modify and manipulate it in some way, shape or form. And from those modifications and manipulations, I might be able to actually get some unauthorized access, read files I shouldn't be able to read, maybe see things inside of uh, web APIs that are gonna be sensitive, they shouldn't be leaking out into the, to the world. If you know how to use Burp Suite, it's gonna give you a lot of that mileage. And again, I can just come to things like the proxy area, which shows us where that is. I work a lot in the history area, so I can actually see, hey, these are the sites. And you can see I've been to GitHub, and there's API for GitHub. And in the bottom screen here, if I just scroll this up, you'll see the actual request that I made out to that website. From here, I can move this over to the repeater, make manipulations. So if I right click, send a repeater, I can jump over to repeater and start manipulating this information, change things like my user agent from Mozilla to maybe Safari or something different. See if I get a different type of response 
through those manipulations. And that's why I really enjoy using Burp Suite for when I'm working with pen testing as far as a web application goes. Great tool. My next tool is not something that you actually install on your system, but it's a, a resource that's found on the internet. It's a great uh, resource, so I highly recommend it. It's called GTFO Bins. It's found in GitHub. So let's take a look at what that looks like and we'll explain a little bit more about it. So here's the site and you can see that GTFO Bins is a curated list of Unix binaries that can uh, be used to bypass local security restrictions and misconfigured systems. I typically run here when I'm trying to perform something like privilege escalation attacks. I can take a look and see if any of the binaries that have something like uh, SUID set or GUID, which allows me to elevate my privileges while I'm running those, those uh, tools, maybe I can manipulate that to gain more access to elevate my privileges to a higher level. And you'll see that as you work through here, you can see that they have something like, uh, there it is right there, SUID, and it kind of explains that, shows you the binaries that have SUID permission issues, that if you were able to have access to them through SUID, maybe you'll find yourself with a root shell. And you can see it also gives you options like functions of file read, abusing sudo, uh, gaining shell access. So if you find yourself in a jail shell, maybe I can break out of that shell using the ash command, right? So a really great repository of different binaries that have security vulnerabilities and how they map to what you can do with them, especially when I'm looking for those privilege escalation vectors to get out of where I am currently trying to gain more access in the system. I use this a lot. So it's a great tool if you are working inside of system hacking or you found yourself inside of a system trying to gain more privilege. All right, the last tool on my list is gonna be Python. It's a great tool. You might think, oh, that's a programming language. It is a programming language, but it's also a great way to build your own tools or to uh, do things automatically or programmatically to help increase efficiency and speed. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, Python, a couple of tools I have here in my tools directory that I've created myself. If I just do an ls pipe grep for pi, it'll show us a lot of stuff with a dot pi extension, which are tools that I've created. Some of them, very proud of are things like PyCat. It's kind of a, um, a, a network connectivity uh, command uh, system that I built myself so that I could fly under the radar from things like antivirus where Netcat might get busted. PyCat makes its way through loud and clear and doesn't give me any problems. So I like that. Uh, also have this one like here, this Py Intruder. This was a SQL injection tool that I looked, uh, that I created actually, to look for SQL injection issues with logins and different pages that might have that as a problem. And it'll throw a bunch of different types of SQL injections at them, see if anything sticks, and then alert me to when that occurs. A lot of great stuff in here. I found Python like super helpful. Not only that, but creating my own tools, but using it as different types of tools. If, if I want to, I can do Python 3 and dash M HTTP.server and then give it a port number. And now I can serve up static web pages using Python. It's a great way to transfer files. I can do things like FTP. I can do web requests with it. Tons of great functionality just built into the Python standard library. And you never know what you're gonna be able to do because it's got so much functionality to it. So I love having the ability to work with Python as that uh, movable and elastic tool that can allow me to do just about anything I need. So there you go, my top five pen testing tools, or at least the tools I get a lot of mileage out of when dealing with things like CTF and pen testing. If you like what you saw or you're interested in cybersecurity training, I'd love to see you over at itpro.tv where I have classes on cybersecurity and even pen testing itself. So if you're interested in that, you should come on over and check that out. Until then though, have a great day.